Dr. Romano, you're always working. I've got a question for you, Dr. Uh, Romano. I am always working. I hate indolence. Okay, I'm a little nervous, but to ask, are you in the mood to do some compounds? I'm always in the mood to name compounds. Come you around are? and let's take a look. Let's do some naming. I got six compounds I want you to name for me. Let's do the problem number one. Beryllium iodide is the name. So for this one, we have beryllium, beryllium iodide. Boy, did you get all wrecked on that compound the other day. You thought it was ionic. Even though there's a metal here, be careful. Beryllium is an exception to the rule. It does not form ionic compounds. If you look at the electronegativity of beryllium, it's 2.5. Iodine is 1.5, and it gave you 1.0. Only when you're at 1.7 and over is it ionic. This is way under that. I'm not asking you to memorize some silly numbers, but just remember, a beryllium compound will almost always betray you as far as being ionic. How about this next one? This is a hard one. NH4ClO. Well, this is ammonium, and this is hypochlorite. So this would be called ammonium, ammonium, hypochlorite. This one you should recognize from organic chemistry. This is that beautiful purple color of potassium, potassium, per manganate. If you remembered, this compound would react with double or triple bonds and it would, it would change from a beautiful purple to a brown. It's a test for unsaturation, as is bromine and carbon tetrachloride. The next one is an interesting one. Whenever you see a transition element, always think of Roman numeral. So if you put your finger over this, this is carbonate. Carbonate has a minus two charge, so iron would be plus two. So this would be called iron two carbonate. This next one, if you ever see two non-metals, that's when we use the prefix system. So I see a sulfur and I see three O's, so that's a trioxide. So I would call this sulfur trioxide. What's any naming without one final organic chemistry question? This is a toughie. Well, I have a carboxylic acid, but there's two carboxy acids here, and this is substituent. So I'm gonna number it this way. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This group, or for number two, is called oxo. So it's called 2 oxo heptane because it's seven dioic acid. Wow. Now, I have a lot of naming in the destroyer for you to go practice, but I hope this gives you um, a little bit of practice on the naming. So make sure you go over these names and the ones we've got in Destroyer, and I think you should be fine. If you need additional naming, any textbook can give you the names of compounds, or if you really need more boning up, the Gen Chem Destroyer has other stuff in it as well. All right, I hope that gives you a good idea of it what we've does, got. It does, Dr. Ma. I've been studying all day. I've really worked up an appetite. I think I'll go get a few donuts. You want a nice... Crispy donut. You look well fed. I don't think you need any donuts. But before I leave, make sure you're studying. I mean, I, I can't stress this more. I see more bullshit about you using a study guide or using a dental student's way that he went about it. Don't be scammed into anything like that. Stay at your own pace. Do the material. Um, I should by next week have a nice study outline for you to do the Gen Chem, but make sure you're going over the material, thinking that there's any magic bullet or any silver bullet, you're mistaken. You gotta go over the material. So this is a very important chapter going over the nomenclature of compounds. There's no secret to this, you gotta study it. All right, good day I'm to you. studying hard, Dr. Romano, I'm getting that 30. Good day to you, sir, good day. Just wanted a donut, sheesh.